We want to welcome G. Hi, Pastor. Hey, Terry. God bless you. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? Praise God. Praise God. I'm blessed and highly favored, too. Hey, let's talk maybe later on this week about the visions you're getting about the invasion. And then I'll talk to you about the vision I had about an invasion of this nation. So let's maybe get together sometime later this week, okay? I would like that very much. Just to let you know, you're not the only one getting these kinds of visions. Uh, uh, that's why we've got to pray, not only yeah. for America, but for the whole world. So we'll yeah. talk later on, Jeep, okay? All right. Praise God. Jackie Fisher. Hallelujah for Jackie Fisher. All the way from Kentucky. Come on and say hello to us, Jackie. Hey, Pastor. Hey, God bless you. How are you? Great. I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you all? We are doing fine. We are doing fine. How, how is Mr. Russell doing? He is getting over a cold. Praise the Lord. He's feeling much better. Thank you. Okay. Tell him we love him and we're praying for him, okay? We sure will. We praise you. Thank God. And God bless you and Thank your household. You. Okay. Hey. Say hi to oh, Jackie for us. I sure will. We, we, we appreciate you, Jackie, and you're you're doing a great job in the school, and, and you're part of our lives, and we love you, and thank God. Well, that goes for all of you, not just Jackie, but for all of you. Ryan Trogler, Ryan and Tara and Jenna from up in Marysville, Pennsylvania. Good morning, Pastor. How are you doing this morning? Hey, Ryan. Fine. How are you? Oh, just like everybody else, man. Blessed and highly favored and just ready to serve the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Regardless of the weather and what the threats of the weather happen to be, praise God. We're troopers, man. Uh, we, we worship the Lord in snow and rain, sunshine and, and whatever, wind. Praise God. God bless you and your family, man. You keep on taking good care of your family, all right? Uh, yes, sir. God bless you and Miss Jackie. And yeah, we're good. I think we're supposed to get six more inches of snow up here. Six more inches of snow. Okay, okay, Miss Tara, Miss Tara, spring is coming. One more month, Miss Tara, spring is coming. <laughs> it, yeah, we've been praying for warmer weather. Yes. <laughs> I, I know, I know, Miss Tara does not like snow, huh? Uh, no. no, sir, she does not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hold on. You, you all hang in there now. You all hang in there. Look, if you get tired of it, you all come down to Georgia, spend some time with us. We've got a wonderful guest room. You come and spend time with us. Bring Jenna too, okay? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for that. And uh, again, God bless you and Miss Jackie. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, Dustina, Dustina, and all of my friends, Dustina and Michael and her family, uh, Nikki and Destiny and and Nathan. How are you all doing, Dustina? Good morning, Pastor. We are doing wonderful. Thank you. Praise God. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise just God. cold here. <laughs> we got used to the warmth and the windows open, and now it's freezing, so we're trying yeah. to stay warm now. Yes, yeah, so last, last week it was hot, now it's freezing again. Yes, yes. It, it's messing with us, so. Uh -huh. so. I'll hang in there and uh, give my love to the family, all righty? We'll sure do it. Thank you. God bless. And thank you for commenting on my haircut. It made me feel good. You it looks good. good. It looks good. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell Jackie you said that. God bless you. Christy Carpenter up in Kuna, Idaho. Hey, Christy and Aaron and all the carpenters, say hello to us. Good morning, Pastor. How are you today? Good morning, Christy. I'm doing fine. Bless and highly favored. The same here and ready to rejoice in the Lord all day long. I am so excited for today. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's an excitement in the air. There's an excitement in the air. And we've got a good friend of ours, David Carter. He's waiting in the wings. He's, he's buckling up his seatbelt so he won't be uh, flying too high. And you can fly as high as you want, David. But we'll be hearing from him soon, Christy. So get, it, get ready for an exciting message from the nation of Dubai. David's going to tell us about where Dubai is and how he got there and, and what's going on there. So we praise God. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. And Zisla, Zisla, Zuby girl down hey. in hello. Texas, Midlothian. Hey, Zisla, come on, say hello to us. Hello, Pastor Carter. Greetings to everyone. And uh, and I just, I'm hoping um, if we can do a quick prayer. 
if that's all right, uh, for all of the babies that um, that maybe uh, the parents may be considering abortion, that they may, you know, bring it to God and uh, put it to their mind to change, you know, hopefully that they would change their mind and decide to keep their child. Praise God. Praise God. By the way, Zizba, I want you to pray yes. that prayer. And also, as you're praying that prayer, pray for our preacher, David Carter that the word of God will come forth. Pray for him and his family in Dubai. Would you do that for us, Zisla? Okay. So, um, God, our Father, uh, we pray to you now, all of us together, all the people hearing on this line and uh, many other uh, locations that are going to be listening to this, that we pray for David Carter and that we pray for his health and for everything that he needs, you know, that God will uh, give, give him everything he needs. And we pray for David Carter, and we also pray for the children, that the mothers that are pregnant, that they may reconsider and decide that this child is worth saving, that all lives are valuable, and that they would, uh, you know, the, the mother and father, that they would agree that, yes, this child should be kept and not perform an abortion. So everything for the glory of God, and we praise you because this child could be the great-grandmother to someone that will one day, you know, re uh, remove cancer, remove other diseases. So we need to keep these generations alive. And so we praise you, Father God. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Amen. sister, for that powerful Amen. prayer. Amen. And we stand in agreement with you <clears throat> as we pray. Praise God. We want to thank you all once Amen. again for coming online and for those who are listening to the recording and those who will come on live, we thank God, we bless God. Um, we, it, it, it's a privilege of mine and, and a real honor uh, to present a, a, a man of God who I just met him a couple of years ago. I never met him in person. Met him a couple of years ago, and I call him my cousin. Um, he's originally from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and I think uh, Hurricane Katrina or one of the hurricanes uh, was the catalyst for causing him and his family to uproot from Louisiana and go to uh, McKinney, Texas. It was in McKinney, Texas that I met him via the Paul Begley Online Church. And when Pastor Paul introduced me to David, David then became a student of the Back to Basic School of Ministry. The Back to Basic School of Ministry is the forerunner of the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. And so our Back to Basic School of Ministry, which David will be fully accredited this year. Hallelujah. Yay, yay, yay. Amen. David Amen. is one of our graduates of the Back to Basic School of Ministry. And uh, once we re receive that accreditation in this coming summer, we'll let you know, and all the work you've done will be piggybacked into that accreditation, David. And so uh, I, I, I really admire this young man and his precious wife, Nyoka as they uh, boldly, boldly uh, accepted a position to work in Dubai. I hit Mark. I'm going to take the red car. And, uh, uh, and um, no. okay, uh, Zisla, I think you need to mute, okay? Okay, I know we'll figure this out. Okay. Zisla, hello, Zisla. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. Yes, okay. Sorry, thank, I apologize. Thank you. That's all right. That's all right. We all do that. Okay, so David uh, and his wife boldly left McKinney, Texas three years ago to accept a, a job working in Dubai. And uh, you may say, where is Dubai? Well, David's going to tell us a little bit about that and how he got where he is. Uh, uh, but I admire him and his wife and their daughter and their courage to leave Texas to go to a, uh, an unknown place to work. Uh, God has a job for everybody. It may not be where you want it, but God, and God has a ministry. He has a purpose. And David is a graduate. Of, he has the associate degree from the Back to Basics School of Ministry. He's one of our pioneers. And so uh, I'm excited uh, to hear from David. David has accepted the, the opportunity uh, to present the word. So we want to see what God is doing in Dubai and 
uh, in another part of the world. So I, I want you to give him your, your total attention and uh, praise God. Um, we thank God. I want to present to you David Carter. David, uh, you take the mic and you've got uh, as much time as we can give you. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor. I, I just appreciate this and, and honor you. I thank God for you and um, the relationship I have with you um, via P Pastor Paul Begley. And it's such an honor to meet you and your wife, Jackie. Um, like, you, like you mentioned, we never met in person, um, but we had so many um, communications online, through email, um, through cell. So I just thank you and I thank God for the relationship that we have established for these, these few years. And um, I was tremendously blessed by the school, um, back to basic school. And I'm just honored to be a student, a, a graduate student of, of, of that ministry because I learned so much. And I thank God for the ministry, um, that what he's doing now in your life, in the, in the life of your wife is right now. So, and I also want to um, thank you so much, Pastor. And it's just an honor to, to speak the word of God on this, this morning. I, I have to remember that it's morning there and it's night here. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 so I apologize if I refer to night. <laughs> it, it, it's night here. It's late here. But um, I thank God for you and your beautiful wife, Jackie, and your family. And also, I want to thank God for everyone who's online. I pray for, I've been praying for the online church, praying for y'all families, praying that God will bless. And I just thank God for each and every one of you. Um, as Pastor um, Carter mentioned, that we're living in Dubai right now, currently living in Dubai. Um, we came over here in 2016, and we signed a two-year contract. And um, my wife, um, she's a school teacher, so she wants to work internationally. And I was um, a pastry chef. So it was easy for me to get a job out here as a pastry chef, and my wife wanted to teach school out here, so that's what we're doing now. Um, and we signed up for another two more years, so we're going to be out here for another two more years um, out here in Dubai in the Middle East. Um, give you a little bit about what, what God is doing out here in the Middle East. God is just moving in a mighty, mighty way. Um, we're seeing people right now coming to, come to Christ from all backgrounds. Um, this, this country is predominantly Muslim. And we're seeing Muslims uh, um, accepting Christ now. Uh, um, people from Hindu practice faith, they're coming to Christ now. So God is doing an awesome work here, um, right here in the Middle East. And we just decided to be a part of it. Um, we just seeing God is just saving people. People are surrendering their hearts and, and, and their lives to Christ out here in the Middle East. Um, so we just praise God for that. And we just be a part of that. We're part of a local church out here. And we're just saying God is doing awesome things, wonderful things out here in the Middle East. Um, it's not what you hear. Um, we're not, um, it's not like we're, we're, we're living in Syria or in those bad parts or whatever right now. Dubai is pretty much, it's kind of safe. We're kind of like in a bubble. Um, but God is doing, doing awesome things out here in Dubai, and we just praise God for that. We just thank God for what he's doing out here in Dubai. Um, I want us to get right into um, what God has put on my heart to to share it on this evening, this morning, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, if you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the book of Proverbs. We're going to look at, we're going to look at um, a, a scripture in the book of Proverbs. Thank you so much. Proverbs chapter 3. And we're also going to be looking at a, a verse in Psalms chapter 9, verses 10. Uh, when everybody there, just, just say amen, and I let, and I know you're there. Everybody is in Psalms amen. chapter nine, verse ten. Amen. Okay, I just wanted to know before I get started. Started. I'm gonna read verse ten. It reads, "And they that know, excuse me, before I start, everybody can hear me clearly." Yes, David. Mm -hmm. Okay, amen. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, O Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. I'm going to read it again. It says, they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5, it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. For this morning topic and for this morning sermon, I just want to come from this subject, building on 
the foundation of trust. Building on the foundation of trust. God has given me this word, as Pastor Carter has been teaching us over these weeks, how God is laying a foundation, how God is laying foundational principles that we may glean from. And I thank God for the word that he has given us. He has given us words for us how to build on a solid rock. He is teaching us how these fundamental teachings that we able to build our lives on a solid rock, on a solid rock and not sand. So we're going to look at how to build on the foundation of trust. Every relationship that we have in our lives, every relationship that we have in our lives, it doesn't matter if you're married or single, every relationship that we have in our lives is built on trust. Your relationship with your spouse is built on trust. Your relationship with your family members is built on a relationship of trust. Our relationship with our friends, if we think about it, is built on trust. Every relationship that we have in our lives is built on a foundation of trust. So just think of it. So if our natural relationship requires trust as a foundation, how much more should our relationship with our Heavenly Father require trust or even more? As I study the Bible, as I study the Bible, I love studying about the godly men and women in Scripture. So when I survey the lives of these godly men and women in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, one of the most common traits you'll find is there's trust in God. Abraham trusted God. Moses trusted God. Daniel trusted God. These men in scriptures trusted God. They were able to fulfill their call and their purpose in lives, not because they was perfect, not because, not because they didn't make mistakes. God was able to use these men and women of God in the Bible because they, had, they trusted him. They trusted his will for their lives. And if we're going to fulfill our call and our destiny in Christ, we must have a relationship that is built upon the foundation of trust. One thing about trust, I wanted to establish this about trust. Trust is born out of a relationship. Trust is born out of relationship. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But trust comes by relationship. Trust is formed out of relationship. Trust me must be established. It's not automatic. If you meet somebody, if you meet somebody for the first time, there is no trust. They may be a good person, but there is no trust. Why? Because there's no relationship that has been established. So trust requires trust requires a relationship to be formed. And if we're going to have and if we're going to trust God, there has to be a relationship to be formed with God. Trusting in God, it means to rely on God. It means to depend on God. It means to have complete confidence in God's ability. It means to acknowledge God's faithfulness, which is established through knowing his name. That's how we come to a place of trust in God. We must understand God's name and understand the call of God. So there's three areas in which we're going to look at today that's going to help us have lay a foundation of trust in God. We're going to look at three principles in God's word that's going to help us to be able to trust God or form this relationship with God. Amen? So verse 9, in the book of Psalms, we're going to go back to Psalms chapter 9, verses 10. It, it, it reads, For those who, those who know his name, those who know thy name, will put their trust in God. The first principle of, of, of building up on the foundation of trust is knowing the name of God. We must know God's name. God's name is his character. In the Bible days, when a person, uh, the, the name was intertwined with a person's character. So when we talk about for us, God's name is it's really knowing God's character. It is knowing God, his character, his, his, his character. We must understand and know the character of God. This comes to having a relationship with God. A person's name was reflected in their character. For instance, Jacob name means in the Old Testament, Jacob name means supplant heel grabber. So so we know that names names are associated with a person's character. So we must understand God's name. We must understand the name of God. We must understand God's name. What is the name of God? God has seven covenant names in the Bible. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh, 
the Lord will provide. Genesis chapter 22, verse 13. We must know the names of God. One of, one of the covenant names of God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healed thee. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner of victory. Exodus chapter 17. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Judges chapter 6. Jehovah Raha, the Lord our shepherd. Psalms chapter 23. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Shema, 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 the Lord is present. The Lord is there. We must know the name of God. Those who know his name will put their trust in the Lord. When you're thinking about for us knowing the name of God, when I, like, when I think about knowing the name of God, I think about this man called David, King David. When you look at the life of David, David knew the name of God. And in 1 Samuel chapter 17, it says David place his faith and trust in God's name. David knew the name of God. Thank you so much. David knew, David knew God's name. And we must understand God's name. What is God's name? David knew God's name. He defeated Goliath. Why? Not because of his slain and because of the rocks, because he went to God. He went to Goliath in the name of the Lord. He used the name, he used the name of God to defeat Goliath. So there's victory in knowing God's name. So we must know God's name. We must know the name of God. We must know God's name. Amen? Amen. Amen. We must know the name of God. Because there's healing in the name of God. In Psalm chapter 91, verses 14, God says, I will deliver you, and I will lift you on high, because you know my name. Knowing the name of God is, is having an intimate relationship with the name. It is formed, it's formed through a period of time of, of establishing a relationship with God. Do we know his name? As I mentioned, God is our provider. Have ever, have, have, if God have ever provided for you, have God have ever healed you? Do we know him as Jehovah Rafiki? Has God ever healed you? So we, once we understand God's name, we're able to call upon his name and build a level of trust in God's name. It's important that we know God's name to have a foundation of trust in God. Amen? Amen. N- number two, we, we must know to establish a relationship with God, to establish, to build upon a strong foundation, we must know the ways of God. We must know God's ways. What is God's ways? What is God's ways? We must know the ways of God. God's ways is his essence. It's who God is. It is who God is. And, and, and actually, in chapter Genesis chapter 34, God, Moses said, God, show me thy ways. Show me thy ways. In Psalm chapter 24, Acts, Psalm chapter 103, verse 7, the Bible says that Moses, God showed Moses his ways and showed his acts to the children of Israel. Moses knew the ways of God. He had a deeper relationship with God. He knew God's ways. The Bible says that God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend because he, he knew the ways of God. He knew the heart of God, the mind of God. So he knew God's ways. It is not enough to know God's acts. The children of Israel knew his acts, but they didn't know his ways. So therefore, they didn't have trust, a level of trust in God. Because when things got hard, they complained, they murmur, they wanted bread, they, they wanted more manna, they wanted more meat. Why? And they complain, why? Because they didn't have a level of trust. Moses knew the ways of God. Moses knew the ways of God. That was an intimate fellowship. The Bible said that he would meet with God in the congregation, in the tabernacle of, of the congregation. He would go out and, and meet with God. Every day, Moses had this relationship that was built upon trust. And he knew the ways of God. He knew the heart of God that was expressed through his ways. Amen. So if we're going to have a deeper relationship with God we, and build upon a strong foundation, we must know the ways of God. What is the ways of God? I, I, I just love knowing the ways of God. I don't want to know his acts only. I want to know the ways of God. I want to have an intimate, a, a deeper level of fellowship with God. I want to see his ways in my life. I want to know his ways in my family. I want to know the ways of God, how he acts, who he is. I, I want to know the ways of God. So it's important um, that, we, that we understand the ways of God. Amen? It's, uh, it's, 
Thirdly, we're going to look at for us a third principle of foundation as far as building on the foundation of God is knowing the word of God. Um, we must know God's word. Um, Pastor Carter had a teaching um, last week building on the solid foundation for us authority of God's word. We must know the word of God. In Psalms 119 verse 42, it says we must trust. David says, I trust in thy word. And he said, oh, God, I trust. In thy word, I trust in your word, O Lord. David had his faith and his trust in God's word. David, David's relationship was built upon trust in God's word. David had a relationship that was built upon trusting in God's word. How do we trust in God's word? James 1, chapter 1, verse 22, it says, those who hear the word and obey it, that, that man is blessed. So how we trust God's word? How we know God's word is by obeying, hearing and, hearing and obeying the word of God. Not only do we hear the word, but we must obey the word of God, the word in which we hear. That's how we build upon a foundation of trust in God's word. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verses 4, it says that we must live by the, we, we not only live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We, have, we are called to live by God's word. And if we are called to live by his word, we must know his word. And, when, and once we know his word, we must trust in the word of God. God has given us a word. God has given us promises in his word. And we must trust the word of God. Because trusting in the word of God, it allows us to rest in him. Trusting in the word of God, it allows us to have peace in him. When we trust in God's word, we're able to rest in God's word. You, you show me a person trusting in God's word, I will show you a person who at rest with God. When you look at for us, trusting in God's word, excuse me, I'm just going to drink a, a little bit of water. My throat is thirsty. Excuse me. So we must trust in the word of God to build upon a foundation of trust with God. Trust is built by knowing the word of God. Do we know God's word? Do we know God's word? And do we have trust in God's word? Our lives must be built upon knowing God's word. So many people uh, um, know church, they know denominations, uh, but they don't know the word of God. So therefore, there's no trust. So when hardship comes and when trouble comes, they, 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 they're like a man that built a house upon sand. The winds comes. And it blew away. Why? Because it's not founded upon a rock. Because there's no trust in the word. And there's no trust in the word because there's no knowledge of the word. We must have knowledge of God's word to build upon a foundation of trust. Amen? We must have knowledge of the word of God to build upon the foundation of trust. Um, I want to give us three, three things, a couple of things that we, we must not put our faith in. We would go back to Proverbs chapter 3. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. In all, that way, all, in all thy ways, excuse me, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. We cannot trust, we cannot lean to our own understanding. When we don't trust God with all our heart, we will lean to our own understanding. We will lean to our own understanding. We will lean to our own ability. We will put, we will put confidence in our own self in our own strengths, our own skills. But, 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 but Solomon is telling us, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to thy own understanding. I wish I would have known this verse years ago, Pastor Carter, because when I was young, I leaned, to my, I, I, I leaned to my own understanding. And when I was leaning to my own understanding, I made bad decisions. I, I made bad decisions every time. Every time I leaned to my own understanding, it, it came, it, 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 the turnout was bad. <laughs> it was horrible, <laughs> you know. But, but now I'm learning to trust in God with all my heart. Trust in God with all my heart. And we live in a society right now that, that is telling us, lean to your own understanding. We live in a society right now saying, trust in yourself. We live in a, we live in, we live in a culture now, this new age movement now, that everything is about self. Self-righteousness, 
Deliver yourself. Preach to yourself. Save yourself. Heal yourself. Everything is self now in this culture. Look at the movies that are coming out of Hollywood. Everything is self now. Deliver yourself. Save yourself. I remember there was a movie, um, 2012, and, and the premise of the movie was save, man saving himself. The premise of the whole movie was man saving himself. So we have a culture now, a society now, is trying to say everything is about self. Everything is about self, self-consciousness, self-deliverance. Self, everything is self. If you go in the bookstores, everything is self-help now. But what, what they are trying to do, they're trying to, they're trying to get God out of the equation. They're trying to erase God out of the equations. And now the focus is on self and not on God. But Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 15, he says, he is the vine and we are the branches. And he that we must abide in him. Why? Because there's life in the branches. There's life in the vine. Apart from him, we, we cannot do anything. So we must abide in him. We must trust in the vine. There's life in the vine. There's peace in the vine. There's joy in the vine. Everything that we need is in the vine. It is not in and of ourselves. We cannot produce fruit of ourselves. So this notion of trust in ourselves, it is contrary to what the Bible teaches. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, he says, have, um, chapter 4, he says, have no confidence in the flesh. We cannot have confidence in the flesh and serve God. We cannot have confidence in the flesh and serve God. No, we, our confidence and our trust must be in the Lord. We cannot lean to our own understanding. Proverbs chapter 14, it says, it says this, the way that, it, a way that seems right into a man in his own eyes, but the ends there are, are the ways of death. It seems right. When you lean to your understanding, it seems right. Pastor Carter, when I was leaning to my own understanding, it seems right in my own eyes. But I experienced death. I experienced hardship. Why? Because I was leaning to my own understanding. So we cannot lean to our own understanding. Secondly, we cannot put, put we cannot put trust we cannot lean we cannot put trust in our riches. First Timothy six seventeen. Paul 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 warns that the church he says do not trust in trust in uncertain riches. Do not put trust in your riches. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much wealth you have. We are not called to put trust in self in, in riches. The rich young ruler he missed the greatest invitation of known to mankind. Jesus says, follow me. But he would not relinquish his riches. His riches, he had confidence in his riches. He did not follow Christ because he, he, was, he, he was bound by what? His wealth, his riches. So we cannot put confidence in our riches. Jesus said that it's harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's like it's, it's like it's like a, it's easy for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter to the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because that rich man has his confidence and his trust in riches. I remember in 2008 when had the financial the financial crisis, and um, when the financial crisis happened, uh, uh, most people lost a lot of wealth during that time. Um, we go, we all recall what happened during. Um, 2008 financial crisis. People was losing homes. People was losing wealth. There was billionaires going out to millionaires, and as a result, uh, um, if, if you if you study about that time or whatever, it was one of the most times where people had they had the highest the highest suicide rate during that time because people was committing suicide, jumping off of buildings because they have lost a couple of million dollars in their account because they was loot they was taking their own lives. Because they lost their financial wealth. Because their trust was not in God. Their trust was tied to their wealth. Their, tr their trust was tied to their riches. So when, they, when they, their wealth went down the drain, their life went down the drain with it. We cannot trust in riches. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It is the root of all evil. So we cannot place our trust in riches. But we must place our trust in the Lord. Amen. We cannot place our trust in the Lord. Thirdly, we cannot we cannot trust in the world. We cannot trust in this world system. 
in, in the book of in the book of Isaiah chapter thirty and thirty one, God told the, the children of Israel, He said, "Do not trust in the shadow of Egypt. Do not trust in the shadow of Egypt. Do not go down there looking for help from Egypt. Egypt symbolized the world. We cannot trust in Egypt. We cannot trust in the horses and the chariots of Egypt." We cannot trust in Egypt, but we must place our trust in the Lord. Our trust must be in the Lord, not in Egypt, not in his world system. Look at what's going on in the world right now. The world is falling apart. We are, we are, we are, we are right now in the midst of, of, of the longest, we have seen the longest government shutdown in our country, in the, in the history of our country. And it's due to shut down next week if they don't come up with some form of agreement. It's telling us that we cannot put our trust in the system of this government. We pray for our leaders. We thank God for our leaders, but we cannot put our trust in this world system. We cannot put our trust in the world. God, it's, look at what's going on in France and Venezuela. People who trusted in the government. Now they're, they're destitute. They're, they're, there's poverty all over. People, people don't have food. They're, they're rationing off things to eat because they had trust in their government. We cannot trust in this world system, this government. We can't trust in our government. We can't trust in Egypt. God told the children of Israel, he said, do not trust in the shadow of Egypt. God is weaning us off of certain things that we may trust in him. What is the benefits of trusting in God? What is the benefits of trusting in God? When we trust God, we're going to experience rest. We know in the book of Hebrews, he says that we have eternal rest. But we're going to experience rest on this side of heaven. When you read the book of Acts chapter 12, we see a man, Peter, who was about to be executed. And he was jailed. He, he, Peter was in jail. He was about to be executed the next morning. But the Bible said that Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. How can a man sleep knowing that he's about to be executed the next morning? Come on now. How can a man sleep when he knows he's about to be executed the next morning? He was trusting. There was a level of trust that Peter had. He was trusting in God as being sovereign. God, you are in control. To live as Christ is to die as, to live as Christ is to die as gain. He was trusting in the sovereignty of God. God, you have my life. My life is in your hands, not in my hands. So I'm sleeping. I'm not worrying. People who worry can't sleep. I was there before many years ago. I used, to, I used to worry about how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do that. People worrying about how they're going to pay the bills. they up all night. When we place our trust in God, God would give us rest. Peter, Peter had rest. He was sleeping between two soldiers. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus himself, he told the disciples, he said, let's go get in the boat. And let's go to the other side. And as they got into the boat, the Bible said a storm arose. And the disciples began to, to panic. Jesus, you care us not. We're about, to, we're about to drown. We're about to lose our lives. But Jesus, the Bible said that he was on at the bottom part of the ship, the bottom part of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. How was he able to sleep in the storm? Why? Because he trusted in his own word. Because he was going to make it to the other side. We are able to sleep through storms. We are able to rest in hardship. We are able to sleep through storms when we have trust in God. We have trust in his word. We are able to sleep through storms. Jesus was able to sleep through storms. You notice the disciples? They was, they was woke. They was awakened by the storms and panicking. Why? Because there was no trust. There was no trust established. Jesus said that we are going to go to the other side. And he went to sleep. That's all he had to say. He went to sleep. He believed that we're going to, he's going to make it to the other side. He was resting in his own words. So we must rest in the word of God. God has promised us his word. So we must take that word that God has promised us and rest and find rest in it. Because there's rest in God's word. There's rest in God's word. There's also peace in, in God's word. When we trust in God, we're going to experience peace. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, he says, those who, he said, those who keep their mind upon him, he would keep them in perfect peace, 
those who keep their mind, their mind upon him, not upon your problems, not upon your troubles, not upon your circumstance, but as we keep our mind upon him, he will keep us in perfect peace. Then he tells us why. Because they trusted in me. Because they trusted in me. They kept their mind upon me. I'm going to keep them in perfect peace. Peace is a byproduct of trust. When we trust God, we're going to experience peace in our lives. We're going to experience peace in our homes, peace in our marriage, peace in our lives when we trust God. Another byproduct, another byproduct of trust is security and protection. In Psalms 91 verse 14, David says, God says, because you've trusted me, I will deliver you and I will put you on high. Securely, I will secure you on high. God says, because you trusted me, David, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to deliver you. As we trust God, God would deliver us. He will protect us. Why? Because we know his name. Another byproduct of trust is being able to be unmovable in the face of storms and trials. Psalm 125 says, they that trust in the Lord should be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. It says, they that trust in the Lord should be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. When we trust God, it causes us to be unmovable. We're unmovable. When the wind blows, when the wind of trouble blows, we're not moved by it. Why? Because we're going to be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. God will give us the ability to stand the test, the test in trials. In other words, my brothers and sisters, we'll be unmovable in the midst of hardship. When you think about Mount Zion, Mount Zion is still standing over there in Israel. There's a lot of wars and a lot of battles fought around Mount Zion. There's a lot of conflict that happened around Mount Zion. But Mount Zion is still standing. Mount Zion is still standing. It abided forever. And we are going to be like, like Mount Zion once when we place our trust, our trust in the Lord. We will be like, like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. We're not going to be moved by trouble. We are, we're, not, we're not going to be moved when we receive a phone call and, it, and it's not favorable. The report is not good. We're not going to be moved. We're going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So there is benefits. There is a blessing to trusting in God. There is a blessing to getting to know the name of God. It, it, it is a blessing to getting to know God and to getting to know God's name and establishing that relationship with God and building our relationship on the foundation of trust. It is on this foundation that's going to take us into our purpose. It's going to take us into our destiny. And getting back to the life of David, David, as I mentioned earlier, he had trust in the name of God. Because he knew God. He knew God. He knew God. He, he knew God. He had, there was a relationship established. So therefore, when he faced Goliath, he was not afraid. He told Goliath, he said, you come, from, he, he said, you come before me with a spear and, and a sword. But I come before you in the name of the Lord. He didn't, he didn't mention about his slang. David didn't have confidence in his slang. But he had confidence in the name of the Lord. It was the name of God that he received the victory. In Psalms chapter 56, another benefit of knowing God's name and having trust in God, we will not operate in fear. In, in Psalms chapter 56, verse 3, it reads, he says, this is David speaking. He says, when, I'm, when I am afraid, Psalm 56, verse 3, he says, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. And in God, have I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. 
David says, when I am afraid, when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. Trust is the antidote to fear. Trust, you show me a person who's fearful, I show you a person who don't have trust. Trust is not established in that person's life. Fear and trust cannot coexist in the life of a believer. Either we trust in God or we actually walking in fear. And the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love in a sound mind. But we allow fear to come in when there is no trust. We open up the door to fear in our lives when there is no trust. How do we get fear out of our lives? By establishing a relationship of trust that's built upon trust with God. Fear cannot, fear cannot stay when we trust God. Fear cannot stay when we trust God. Fear has to leave. David says, when I am afraid. Have you ever been afraid? This is, we, we talking about, we talking about a man, we talking about David. David, David had fears at times. We talking about a man who was a warrior, who killed Philistines by the thousands. He says, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. So I close by this. How do I know I'm trusting God. This is a simple test that we all could do. If I have trust in God, how to determine if I'm trusting God? Answer this question. Where do I go first for help? Who do I call on first for help? That will be determined. Do I, do, I, do, I, do I look at my bank statement to see if I have enough to pay the bills? Do I, do, I, do, I, do, I, do I look in my water decks, my, in my cell, to see if I could call someone first? Or do I cry out unto God? Verse 9 says, same chapter, Psalm 56, he says, I will cry out to thee, O God. David says, I'm going to cry out to God because his trust was in God. We must, we must have trust and faith in God's word. And that faith and trust in God is going to help us in our walk with him. We can't walk with God without trusting God. So I thank God for this opportunity. I pray that we all online, everyone's online, will build this relationship, this foundation of trust with God through his word. Like I mentioned earlier, trust is not automatic. It must trust is born out of relationship. It must be established. It is getting to God's word. It is praying more. It is seeking the face of God. And when we do those things, we will build a foundation. We will build a foundation. Our foundation will be built upon trust. Amen. Thank God. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Thank amen. God for you, David Carter. Thank God for the Holy Spirit for giving you this word. Now, we're, we want David to stay on, and we want you to stay on, because we want to dialogue with David in a few moments. But right now, let's just thank God for this word. Wherever you are, just thank God for the word of God. Thank God for using David Carter and Nyoka and their family. And let's just thank praise you. God. Wherever you are right now, just worship God in your own way. Father, we worship you. We bless you. We thank you. We praise you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us so much that you sent your word. Thank you for using your manservant, his wife and family. Thank you for planting them there. Thank you for all who have come online. Thank you for encouraging our heart with your word, Lord God. Thank you for teaching us how to build a, a strong foundation on you, for putting our trust in you. Now, Lord, cover your manservant with the blood of Jesus, as well as all of these uh, members of their online church and their families, we trust you. We bind any spirit of retaliation that will come against them. We praise you. Lord, you said your word will not return to you void or empty. And so, Father, if there's anyone listening, even to the recording, who is not saved, we pray that they will receive Jesus Christ today by faith and put their trust in him. Lord Jesus, you said you've never seen anyone made ashamed who put their trust in you. And so we praise you. We worship you. We thank you for raising up David Carter. We thank you for using him 
and his precious wife, Nyoka, giving them the boldness and the courage to move from Texas to Dubai to work there. And, Lord, that you've given them the faith to sign a contract to extend for two more years. So we ask that you'll cover them with your precious blood, meet every need that they have, and use them, Lord, to continue to win people to the Lord, Muslims and Sikhs and, and, and uh, others, God, whoever will hear the word of God, give them divine favor, and we thank you. Then, Lord, we ask that you bless this online family. Bless all who have taken the time out to come to worship today. Bless them, meet every need, rebuke the devourer. We thank you. Thank you for feeding us with your word. We praise you and honor you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. David Carter, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your boldness and your courage and for seeking the word of God uh, to feed us today. And we have received a powerful, wonderful meal. Now we're going to, David, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to, ask people to unmute their phones and we want uh, people there may be some who want to ask you some questions and uh, uh, how you got to Dubai and what's what's it like there so I'm gonna just uh, give give uh, the time over to to the, the online church and and uh, let's just fellowship with David and Nyoka and so unmute your phone please and, and, and thank this man for preaching and encourage him and then if you have any questions about Dubai and what it's like there, please ask him. Hey, Nyoka, you're a school teacher. You know when you put a question like out like that, nobody's going to raise their hand. you got to pick on somebody, okay? And so uh, we know how you all are. Come on, somebody, uh, greet this man of God and his family and um, ask him a question or two. I have a question for you. This is Christy Carpenter. Um, hey, how you doing, Christy of... Carpenter? <laughs> I'm doing wonderful, especially after that. Thank you so much. Uh, um, thanks, God. This is a little off the wall, but it is a question that's very important for my 17-year-old son. Do you get to see a lot of Lamborghinis in Dubai? Um, I'm coming again, Christina. What did you say? Um, Lamborghini cars in Dubai. Do you get to see a lot of those there? Um, yes, we actually see a lot of Lamborghinis here. Um, there's a lot on the road here. <laughs> um, I actually see more Lamborghinis here than I saw in the U.S. <laughs> um, we, we, have, we see a lot of Lamborghinis. Um, we don't drive a Lamborghini, but I see a lot, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I know this is totally off, but he has been dying to know that. Thank you. Yeah, tell him it is true. There's a there's a lot of Lamborghinis. Um, they actually have um, some police cars are Lamborghinis as well. Um, you see them on the road from time to time as well. The, the police cars are Lamborghinis. So um, there's a lot of Lamborghinis here. Oh, well, I think I need one here to keep up after him sometimes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Next person. Um, David, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, your wife is a school teacher? Yes, she is. Um, do you and your wife have difficulty sharing the gospel with uh, young children in Dubai? Um, well, over over here, um, evangelism has to be, uh, um, we have to do it in a different way um, to um evangelism um we can't do openly evangelism in other words we just can't go out on the streets or not only the children even with adults um we just can't go out pass out flyers or really um uh, um evangelizing the children here um especially if they um of islamic faith 
um, it's really a law that, that forbids for us um, Muslims converting to Christianity. Um, but what we're seeing right now, um, we're seeing a lot of children, um, they are being invited, say for instance, my daughter, um, she's in school here, so they have, they meet, they, they meet my daughter, like my daughter who's a Christian, and they have conversations with them on their level. And they, even the children, the Christian children over here is actually evangelizing the Christian children over here as well. So God is using that aspect of for us. My, my wife as a teacher here, she cannot really, um, share the gospel at school, but she can share the love of Christ in many ways. Um, they know she's a Christian, of course, um, but she can't really, um, proselyte. I mean, she can preach or, or, or teach the word of God at a school, at a local school, but there's other ways that the gospel is getting out. We do have churches here, and we do have a lot of events here. And, uh, you know, ironically, a lot of the um, uh, um, Islamic churches even come to those events. And when they come to those events, we, we're not going out to minister to them. Um, but when they come to those events, they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We was, um, several weeks ago, we was at an event with a couple of our friends at another church. And we saw, I saw a couple of um, um, Islamic children, Muslim children, uh, um, in the congregation. They was having a great time. <laughs> and it was, it was receiving the word of God. So there's many ways God is just opening up door um, to get his word out to um, those of Islamic faith, Muslim faith. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to know about that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was, that was, that was uh, Jackie Fisher. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie. Hey, David, there are the times when you might have to invite somebody to your house and lead them to the Lord? Yes, we, we, we do that a lot out here. Um, uh, um, out here, um, besides um, meeting and, and um, <clears throat> our church is in a hotel, um, but they do have other, they have like a section here in Dubai where they have a lot of churches. It's like a complex. Um, but our, our church, the particular church that we go to is in the hotel. But uh, besides um, going to the church and hotels, we, we have a lot of Christians. We meet together in, in everybody's homes. We take, different, we take turns meeting in, 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 in different homes, and we invite people. We invite people from all over, people on our jobs, um, and we invite people in our homes and be able to um, teach the Word of God and, and share about Christ in our homes, but not on the streets. So we do, we, that's, that's a big part of it as well. Uh, we invite a lot of people over in our homes, and we have Bible studies. Um, we have prayer meetings. Um, we do that a lot throughout the course of the week. Yes. Praise, praise God. God. Praise God. So God is raising up a powerful ministry for you there, huh? Yes, God is doing awesome things. We we just we just we just um there's a lot of people on my job on my wife's job that we just invite over. Um and, and they know that they, they they actually they know they're coming for a Bible study, they know they're coming for a prayer meeting. And they come. And they're from different backgrounds. And we're able to share Christ with them. And um so we we're not on the streets evangelizing, but we're able to invite people over. Um, you know, if they accept the invitation. And a lot of people are coming. Um, Dubai is known as a, a place of wealth, and that is true, a um, place where people come for vacations. But God is doing a mighty work here um, underneath that, and that's not being really told. Um, people looking at it for us, all the extravagance of Dubai. But God is, God is raising up a church here, a mighty church here. That's a mighty move here. Um, the church that we're actually involved in, um, there's, there's missionaries going from our church all over the all over the Middle East, establishing other churches. So that's awesome. Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! And, and it's good to know that Back to Basics Ministries has a part in what's going on in Dubai. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise God! Praise God! Well, we Jackie and I um, put off. We canceled our trip to Africa this year so that we can raise money to build a church in Africa. So we hope to see you next year when we travel to Africa and we stop by Dubai. Praise God. This, this is exciting, David, and, and I, I feel your excitement. I wonder, uh, Church, do you feel his excitement? Do you sense his excitement? I want to I hear uh, Dustina uh, come and talk with you. Uh, you're a baker, and Dustina is the best cook in the U.S. of A. And then <laughs> Dustina, best cook, come and talk to the best baker. Justina, I heard you a little bit. She 
he's probably having mic problems, um, David, but um, okay. Come in. She, she's, she's powerful, and her son, Nathan, has preached on this ministry. He's only 13 years old. God's raising wow, up that's powerful amazing. ministry. They're from Kentucky. Anyway, we've got wow. a fellow Texan, a fellow Texan, Zizla, come and greet David, would you please? I don't think this was still on. Uh, Wes had to leave. Um, but uh, Terry, Jeep. Jeep, would you, you have any questions for David? Hi, David. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for bringing that powerful word and allowing the Holy Spirit to use you. Amen, praise God. I I go out and do street evangelism, and what tips and advice could you give to me or bits of wisdom to speak to the Muslims that I meet on the street? Um, the best advice to me speaking to Muslims on the street is really um, because a lot of them um, want to know the truth. Um, I find that just showing the love of Christ, um, you know, just showing the love of Christ, just showing the compassion. Um, um, I used to go out in the streets when I was in the U.S., and we used to, I used to come across a lot of Muslims. And one of the things that you have to show the love of Christ, show the compassion of Christ, um, even though we, you know, of course we, we, we disagree with their faith, um, but, but show respect, you know, uh, uh, when, actually when I'm, when I'm talking to Muslims, um, I, I disagree with what they believe in, but I'm showing respect uh, uh, for what they believe in. Um, so you just show respect, um, show understanding, and just be patient because um, it, it, one of the things that you have to do with Muslims, you got to, what I'm finding out even over here, is through forming friendships with Muslims. You'll find out when, when you're on the street ministering to Muslims, you want to just get the contact information and just follow up and just kind of form a relationship with them and you'll find that they'll be more open to hear to hear more about what you have to talk talk about for as your faith. Um, because Muslims are very relational people. Um, so once you actually um, establish some type of relationship with them, they'll be very open to what you have to say. And they'll be very open, very receptive of what you have to say. So that's how we're able to plant seeds. Uh, and God and others may water, and God will get the increase. So just, just try to form relationships with Muslims. Uh, um, ask God, how can you form this relationship with this Muslim person or whatever? And God will open up a door, and, we, and you'll be able to plant seeds in their lives, and you'll see a harvest. Okay. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, David. Let's try to get Dustina in again. Um, hopefully she's got her mic situation corrected. Dustina? Hi. Okay, Dustina. Pastor Carter, she's having uh, mic issues. Okay, okay, Ryan. Thank you very much, Ryan. Um, wow, we sure wanted to hear from Dustina today. Ryan, anything you'd like to ask David or share with him and his family? I don't have any questions, but I do have a comment for him. I just want to say praise God for putting him over there and preaching the word of the Lord. And praise God for his wife for teaching them children over there. I mean, she's go she's going to need all the help she can get over there with them children. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And praise God for their boldness, for, for their faith and trust in the Lord to be willing to go to Dubai. And, and uh, I understand you're coming back for a little vacation in July, David. Is that right? Yes. Yes. We'll we be back in July. Um um, for like a uh, like a whole month, the whole month of July and part of um, the first part of August. So we're looking forward to that um, coming back uh, coming back home, and we're looking forward to that seeing our family and our friends. So we'll definitely be back in July. Good, praise God, praise God. Well, we 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 appreciate you so very much and love you very much, and and want you and, and you Nayoka and the family to know that we we are praying for you. You all be uh, steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. And if you need us for anything, David, let us know, okay? Let us know. Amen. Uh, in about two more weeks. 
in about two more weeks, uh, our my new book will be out. It's called The Online Church and the Great Commission. The Online Church and the Great Commission. I'm going to send you a copy of that, and um, that will help you in your work there because I can see a great ministry uh, for you um, as the Lord uses you. So I'm going to send you a copy of that. You continue doing what you're doing. I know it's getting late there. I know it's bedtime there. What time is it, about 11 o'clock p.m.? Uh, yes, about that time. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Oh, praise God. Hey, we love you very much. And uh, um, Dustina said she has mic issues. Uh, she's not the best cook, but she enjoys cooking. Please tell David that I really enjoy the message today. That is the blessing and helps me to reflect on this message during the trials that I face. It's perfect timing. Praying for David and his family, and God bless. Jackie Fisher says praying for David and his family, and others are praying uh, for David and and for you and your family. We thank you, David. Remember, you've got thank family you. here who loves you, and uh, you need us. Give, give, give me a call. You know how to get in touch with me. Um, Man, and, absolutely. Uh, Dioka, we praise God for you, for your faith. And, and for your, your, your daughter, and, and, and may God continue to cover you with his precious blood and use you to Thank the praise you. of his glory, that you will not lack Thank any good thing. And we praise God. And for the online church, God bless you. May God use you. Um, this recording will be on my YouTube channel. And, and continue being faithful, everybody. Continue being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God bless you. Have a good day. By the way, David, Jackie is in her local church, and uh, she's been there for 30-some years. Uh, she loves you and extends her love to you, and we're very proud Amen. of you. God bless Amen. you. Pray Pastor. Okay. Any closing remarks, David? I, I just want to thank everybody who, who came online. Um, God bless each and every one of you, your families. Um, God bless you, Pastor Carter, and your wife, Jackie. And I just thank God for this online church, and we just praise God for it. And we just thank God we are blessed by this coming online and just sharing with you. And we just thank God for what you have imparted within my life and the life of my family. So we just praise God for you and your wife, Jackie. Praise God. Praise God. Now I'm going to send a copy of this recording to Paul and Heidi Begley, David. Okay. Amen. Okay. God bless you, everybody. See you next time. Thank uh-huh.